they got away with it. We all know that, but we want to end that. The financial crisis was avoidable. It was the result of human mistakes, misjudgments, and misdeeds. Those are the conclusions of the FCIC, the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. But despite their findings, no Wall Street executive has been prosecuted. The chairman of the FCIC is Phil Angelitas. He joins us now from Sacramento. Phil, thanks for coming on board. Good to be with you, Elliot. Good to be with you again after so many years. So many years. We, uh, full disclosure, we worked together when you were the treasurer of the state of California. I was the attorney general of New York. Let me ask you, what distill it down to a couple of the critical conclusions that you reached after this huge inquiry, millions of pieces of paper, thick, thick document. Give us the Cliff Notes version. What are the couple of things we got to know? Well, here's the essence. The essence is you're right. Unlike the narrative that's spun out by a lot of people on Wall Street and in Washington, uh, this was not, as Lloyd Blankfein would say, a hurricane that blew offshore. It wasn't an act of uh, nature. Uh, this crisis was avoidable. It was caused by deliberate decisions, misjudgments, inaction by regulators. And when you boil it down, uh, Elliot, reckless conduct by major financial institutions and regulators who are asleep at the wheel. This didn't need to happen. We didn't need to have 26 million Americans out of work, can't find full-time work, stop looking for work. We didn't need to have 4 million families lose their homes to foreclosure, and that number may rise as high as 13 million. Uh, this was an avoidable catastrophe, and I'm not sure we've learned the lessons from this disaster. Well, I'm, I'm going to come back to whether or not we've learned the lessons in a moment. I want to ask you, Senator Levin came out with a report late last week with a Republican colleague, Senator Coburn. They joined sides. That was not in any way a partisan, in fact, it was a bipartisan report. Your commission report had a dissenting report that you know, there was sort of partisan wrangling in the course of your inquiry. What happened? Why was that? Well, look, all I can speak for is the majority that adopted the report. We laid out a very factual narrative. Now, in two months since our report was released, there hasn't been one challenge to the facts of what happened, what led us to crisis, the facts of the crisis. Uh, we felt very strongly uh, that it was important to attribute responsibility and accountability, and some of the members of the commission weren't willing to do that. But for example, we saw that the Federal Reserve had all the information and the power they needed to stem the flow of toxic mortgages, and we called them on it. We saw that the Federal Reserve Bank in New York didn't control the excesses of Citigroup and other big bank holding companies. And we also saw the pernicious growth of mortgage fraud as it worked its way up the chain. Loans were originated that were fraudulent. They were packaged and sent all around the world Look, without proper disclosure. Phil. So we called it like we saw it. Look, you are properly focusing on, on the, the major players there, the regulators, the Fed in particular, the investment banks. And, you know, as anybody watching the shows knows, knows, I've gone after those investment banks. I want to focus for a minute on the Fed. You talked about the Fed. That was run out of Washington by Alan Greenspan here in New York by Tim Geithner, who's now the Treasury Secretary. If I hear what you're saying, you're saying they had the tools to stop what happened. Absolutely. Let me just give you one example. Uh, the Federal Reserve was the one entity that had the full authority to set mortgage lending standards in this country. And starting in the late 1990s, they started to get widespread reports of egregious predatory lending practices. As you know, many attorney generals jumped into the fight in the early 2000s uh, to stop unfair lending, pernicious lending practices, and the Fed stopped them from doing that. So the Federal Reserve, it was pushed by its staff. It adopted some rules in 2001 to control out of control subprime lending. They thought the rules would affect 38% of the loans that only affected 1%. It's not until 2006 that they even put down voluntary guidance and not until July 2008 that they actually adopt a rule saying you can't make a loan to a person who can't afford to pay that loan. But Elliot, here's even what I think is more disturbing. When we questioned Alan Greenspan about this, he said, well, you didn't need more regulation. What you needed was stronger law enforcement. So we went and looked at the records. And as it turned out, the Federal Reserve, in the midst of all this terrible lending, from 2000 to 2006 under Mr. Greenspan, referred a whopping three unfair lending cases to the Department Look, of Justice. Phil. A little bank a little bank in Carpentersville, Illinois, a little bank in Victorville, California, 
and the New York branch of Societe Generale, nothing. Look, I, I, look as, as anybody who's watched this knows, I was in AG back then. They tried to shut us down when we tried to enforce the law. They didn't try to come in on our side. The tougher question from, for that I, I think we need to discuss now is we've pretty much well got our arms around what happened when we look backwards. The question is, have we learned the lesson? Have you seen recently what Alan Greenspan has been saying about the effort to impose some rules on the financial services sector? What has he been saying and can we make any sense out of it? Well, he's saying a couple of things. He's saying, first of all, the reason we have a slow economic recovery is too much government activism, and he's decried the frenetic pace of new financial regulation. He recently said that the invisible hand, you know, the Adam Smith, the free markets, uh, let the markets do what they want, has worked well with rare exceptions. Of course, that rare exception being 27 million people out of work. I mean, there's an active effort here to rewrite history. And the fact is, this was the guy, Alan Greenspan, who had his hand on the steering wheels. He had his uh, foot on the gas pedal as we were driven over the cliff. And now he wants to give us driving lessons. But Elliot, in the course of our inquiry, I saw very se little self-reflection on Wall Street, I think in no small part due okay, to Phil, the fact that the American taxpayers, yes. If time is running out. I got one question to you. You and I yes. both know for years the whole mantra on Wall Street was self-regulation. We will regulate ourselves. I think it was bunk and gibberish and never worked. Did you ever see any evidence that anybody on Wall Street picked up the phone, you've got to give me a 10-second answer on this, ever picked up the phone and called the Fed, the OCC, the OTS, any regulator and said, we got a crisis coming, or did they merely, as you say, put their foot on the pedal and lend, 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 and take us right over that cliff? Well, well the industry as a whole, lend, 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 take us over the cliff. There were some individuals who tried to speak up, but they were dwarfed by the just the sheer momentum of the big financial institutions who drove us towards this crisis. All right, Phil Angelitis, thank you for your report, your hard work. Pleasure to be chatting with you. Thank you. We'll be right back.